Good afternoon and welcome to Fortress Press Live, where we connect you with the people and passions behind the books we publish here at Fortress Press. Our guest today is David Shane Connect, and we'll be talking about his work as a resource developer for Fortress Press. David, welcome to Fortress Press Live. Well, it's great to be here, Sean. <laughs> it's kind of a, a fun opportunity for me. Well, why don't you take a few minutes and talk to us about your role here at Fortress Press and some of the things that really give you a passion for the work you do. Well, I've actually been with Augsburg Fortress for 10 years, and I worked primarily on the congregational side of things, most recently with the Sparkhouse Studio, where we were producing some really interesting things for the congregational market. My role there is that of resource developer, and I was kind of surprised, really, to be invited over to participate in the Fortress press side of things as, again, a, a resource developer, because Fortress functions mostly with editors, and a resource developer is a bit of a different role. A resource developer looks at things in terms of possibilities. We bridge new ideas with production, creating new processes along the way, even running through prototyping and validation. So it's a different role that I think most of the Fortress players have been involved with in the past, but it's an exciting role for me because I think it gives us a great opportunity and sort of a changing milieu because religious studies, seminary education is undergoing some tremendous paradigm shifts right now. And I think by being nimble, creative, being a company as Fortress Press is that listens to its consumers is a really important place to be right now. And I think that a resource developer is an important role to have in this day and age. You source and come up with some of your own project ideas. People come to you with ideas as well. I'd be curious to hear a bit about when it comes to acquiring new projects. What are some of the things that really tend to catch your eye or stand out to you? As I mentioned, one of the things that a, that a resource developer does is really pay attention to what's going on out there in their community, in particular the, for me and for Fortress Press, the seminary religious studies community. And there's a lot of ways to do this. You can follow trends in social media. You can read blogs. One of the ways that I extensively did this in 2012 and 2013 was to actually visit seminary classrooms, interview students, hold focus groups, take professors out to lunch or spend some time with them in their studies to really talk about some of the needs that are out there, not only for students, but also for professors. And we even took it to the level of deans. We interviewed quite a few deans from around the country to find out what some of the needs are. And this end-user focus plays an important role in what I do because it leads to things like, okay, students are going more mobile. That's a given. Elementary school classrooms are going to be handing out pads and tablets instead of books. So we know that this is going to be a continuing trend. So how does that impact what we do? Well, when we went through the revision of a, two of our flagship textbooks, History of Christianity by Timothy Dowling and Introducing World Religions textbook by Christopher Partridge, we said, can we put this into a format that would be amenable to mobile devices? And so that's when we got connected to Inkling. And so that end user question then motivates what I do as, as a resource developer saying, okay, maybe we're doing something in, in a very traditional way uh, on the publishing side of things, on the print side of things, but how can we maximize that maybe for our current market and really make products that are both unique, but ultimately uh, extremely useful. I think the same can be said of the foundation series that I helped to initiate. We heard a lot of deans talking about students coming in, not very well prepared for their seminary academic career or uh, professional ministry career. And so we thought about how can we bolster people coming into ministry preparation programs. And so that's what led to the foundation series. Again, listening and responding. And I suppose the same could be said about Seminarian Blog, because that's kind of how that came into, into being. I, I know that that's some of the things you'd like to talk about here in our, in our time together, but frankly, profs were saying, we know that Fortress produces a lot of great content, a lot of intriguing books, a lot of things that generate conversation in our classrooms. But when we go to conventions, a lot of times we're just sitting around the coffee service saying, how do you teach this stuff? What are you doing that, that really works for your students? And so that end user question or need gave rise to Seminarium, 
And so I think as a resource developer, my role is to sort of bridge those things, you know, those needs with resources that answer the needs. And lately, I, I, I have to admit, though, even though we've talked to students and, and professors and, and deans, lately I've been thinking about institutions and organizations and how we might partner with larger entities to help them to fill their vision in regard to resources and in regard to interaction and pedagogy. So that's kind of turning in the back of my mind right now. Well, and you already touched a bit on Seminarium blog. There's a mix of different things that come with building community. You mentioned, you know, visiting classes and some of the things that we do when we're at trade shows and, and events, but obviously in our day and age, social media plays a huge component in blogs as well when you're trying to build community around a product or an idea. And so obviously one of the things that's been a big part of your life here at Fortress Press over the past year is the Seminarium blog. I was wondering if you could tell us a story of how that got its start and talk to us about the vision that really drives a lot of the content on the site. It really goes back to those classroom observations because I probably put on 1,600 miles in the city of Chicago, visiting every single seminary that I possibly could, going into as many classrooms as I possibly could. And some of those professors just really caught my attention. They just did things in very interesting ways. I think if they were to be given a platform, at least I did at the time, they could really help their community, their peers. So as I began to think about best practices of pedagogy and how to get these voices out there, a blog seemed to be the natural thing to do. And so I partnered with one very entrepreneurial and involved professor uh, by the name of uh, Dr. Brooke Lester at uh, Garrett Evangelical Theological Seminary. It's connected to Northwestern in Evanston, Illinois here. And Brooke, to me, exemplified the kind of prop at the cutting edge of the art and craft of teaching that I thought that our blog could highlight. And it's really been kind of amazing to me because people are a little bit surprised when you want them to write about their teaching and how they teach. It's like a breath of fresh air to them, it seems, because I've had no problem whatsoever recruiting people. In fact, I've got more people that want to write for seminary than I have slots available about some really interesting things that they are doing in their classroom. And I suppose if there is a passion that I had, you know, especially as Fortress Press is a purveyor of great content, but everyone knows there's a huge difference between having a great book and creating an understanding <laughs> and those who might be reading and engaging with that content. And so if pedagogy is the means by which you bridge that gap, then I think it really behooves Fortress to think about how we can support those who use our content in their educational settings. And Seminar and Blog is one of the ways that we can do that. We've got a kind of a byline there for Seminar and Blog, uh, the elements of great teaching. And I'd like to think that that's what you can find there. In every single post, in a variety of ways, some kind of very pragmatic element, a uh, building block of, of great teaching that you can use. And it's interesting because even though I have combed seminary and uh, websites, I've, I've gone to numerous workshops at ARSBL to see who's saying and doing some interesting things. It's that variety of voices, I think, that, that has made Seminary and Blog so great because it's not just tenured profs. It's not just academic dean. It's also students. It's also adjuncts. It's also people who are teaching in non-traditional settings. And so I think the, the sort of multifaceted understanding of this process of theological education is what makes, is what makes this project so interesting and intriguing to me and uh, hopefully useful for those who participate in it. You know, I, I just kind of off the top of my head, one of the people who had signed up, you can register for Seminary and Blog, and I think if you register for Seminary and Blog, you can favorite uh, some of your favorite posts and things like that. But also, when you register for Seminary and Blog, you can indicate if you've got an interest to participate with Fortress Press in any kind of way. And so it's a kind of a deepening relationship with people, I guess. And one of uh, the people who had registered for the blog, uh, Julia Fogg, who chairs the religion department at California Lutheran University, which is just outside of L.A., got in contact with us. We talked about having her do a couple of blog posts because she's really into service learning. And we didn't really have anything like that on the blog. So she came in over the summer. 
uh, filled a gap, actually, that we had in the schedule. And very wonderfully, I think, was a pair of great posts about service learning. Likewise, Elton Kestenbaum, who works out of the Center for Pastoral Education at the Jewish Theological Seminary in New York City, she had some things that she wanted to say about verbatims. And in a conversation with her, we began to wonder whether verbatims had a role to play outside of some kind of clinical pastoral care settings. And that began a couple of interesting posts about the use of verbatims in a variety of places. One thing leads to another, leads to another, and it is a community. It's action, reaction, it's interaction, it's moving into deeper levels. I have to say that one of the things that has really excited me the most about working with the seminar and blog, how bloggers or people who've registered for the blog, or even people who follow us on Twitter, begin to enter into a, a deeper relationship, not only with seminar, but with Fortress Press. A number of the people who do, we've been connected with via Seminarian blog are writing for us in a variety of capacities. And not just the Seminarian books that are coming out, but have helped us with inkling projects and other things. Well, and we're on the cusp here of a new book release, and that's the Seminarium Element series. And that really grew out of the work that you've been doing with the Seminarium blog. Talk to us about those. How did those come about? And what are some of the titles that people can look for here in about a month? When we talked about the blog as presenting elements of great teaching, you know, a variety of elements can be combined into making something a larger. <laughs> and so these molecules that seem significant, for example, understanding by design, Brooke Luster's text uh, responded to by, by Jane Webster and, and Chris Jones, was a seminal thought in the blog that got developed into a book, a very, very useful book, I think, for those who really want to think about course design and how that even affects the teaching of the Bible in particular. We have Holly Inglis, who has been doing some significant work in neuroscience, and her book on sticky learning is all about looking at how the brain works and how learning can match up to brain function, and even how faith formation and brain function correlate to one another. Fascinating book that Holly is offering for those folks who would be interested in sort of amping up their approaches to pedagogy. Kristen Largan, uh, Mary Hess, and Christy Sapp, they're talking about interreligious education. Interfaith is sort of a, a big deal uh, when it comes to this multicultural world we live in, but how are we preparing not only undergrads who are going on to nursing or teaching or whatever, but even seminarians who are going into Christian ministry, but how are we preparing them for a interreligious world? And their concern pedagogically is that process and some things to keep in mind along the way of, of doing that, even when it comes to some pragmatic tips about how to visit a house of worship and carry on in, in those environments. It's it just, like I said, really practical stuff. So, you know, we've got Carrie Crumley talking about the students centered learning. And we've got a book coming out by Nathan Lowen, who has a really fascinating approach to doing religious studies education globally, real time, <laughs> you know, people really engaging with one another using the technical things that are available to us. So his book will be coming out uh, later this year as well. So some, I think some really interesting and, and engaging topics, and I hope they're well received. It's a little different place for us. And, and, you know, Fortune is more on the theoretical side generally. And so this is a really practical place for us to be, and I hope they're received well. Now, David, if the listeners are interested in connecting with you and, and also learning more about the Seminarium blog and the related book series, where are some of the places they should go on the web? For sure, go to seminariumblog.org. You just type in Seminarium, we're bound to come up. So seminariumblog.org, it should be pretty easy to find your search engine if you don't you know, remember the URL if I've just given it to you. We're on Twitter. I do want to say Twitter is almost a life of its own in regards to Seminarium. I go through the, the, the seminarium timeline and retweet things. In particular, the, in my mind, I say, wow, that'll teach or that'll support teaching. And I have found that a number of people have said that just our Twitter timeline is valuable to them. It's a well-curated place where you can get some interesting ideas and be taken to interesting places in regard to 
theological education. So I'm actually pretty proud of our Twitter timeline and uh, the way people have received it. And Facebook, uh, of course, is available. I don't think we're that hard to find. <laughs> I'm around. If you're at ARSBL, you don't tap me on the shoulder. Are you the seminarium uh, guy? And I'll say yes. And you'll say to me, I've got this great thing that I do in my classroom. And I'll say, well, let's talk 2015. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, I'm pleased to hear some new voices and new ideas, and, and hopefully these books take off. I would love to continue doing Seminar and Elements books into the foreseeable future. And I'll be sure to include links in the show notes for this episode to all the places that David mentioned, and you'll be able to find those at fplive.fortresspress.com forward slash 012, as this is episode number 12. And David, I just wanted to say thanks so much for being generous with your time today and for being a part of this episode of Fortress Press Live. Well, thank you, Sean. It's kind of a a different role for me. I'm usually behind the scenes and chugging away at all these different things. And so to be given the opportunity to talk about what I'm doing more publicly is just kind of fun. Thank you. Thanks for being a part of my conversation today with David Shane Connect. To view the show notes for this episode or to leave a comment, head over to fplive.fortresspress.com forward slash 012. While you're there, be sure to check out other episodes of Fortress Press Live and subscribe to the show via iTunes. Until next time, this is your host, Sean Tabbitt, signing off.